Good evening, EC. Thank you for joining us on this evening uh, for another session of Life Empowerment and for another conversation. Uh, remember all through this that we are the church scattered, but we are the church still connected. And it's a joy to be able to come to you each week and to share with you as we have been sharing with you to keep you encouraged and to keep you connected in ministry here. Uh, we are the body of Christ and we're touching and changing lives all over the world for Jesus Christ with the love of Jesus. I want to thank you for your support and your tithes and offerings that come in weekly as we uh, receive them. You've been such a blessing and it's been such a blessing not just to EC but to the community as we have reached out and we are extending the love of Jesus to those in our community for such a time as this. I personally again want to thank you uh, for the team and the production team and our EC staff that makes this possible every week. It's a lot of work that goes into this, and yet they do it with a spirit of excellence. So give a shout out to them, give an appreciation to them, because I can do this by myself. I need them and their giftings and their talents to make this possible. A special thank you to our EC partners and our online campus ministry, wherever you are across the world. Thank you so much for your shares, and thank you so much for your contributions that you send. And guess what? Since April up until June, EC has been able to give an outreach both in-house and outside of the house over $12,000. I want to thank you how you showed up, uh, even as we mentioned to you for the rally for the beloved homeless, uh, the towels and the Ziploc bags. And then you showed up a few days ago at one of the new businesses, minority-owned businesses in KCK in the dot Kaleidoscope ice cream shop. And EC showed up and patronized that shop. And we surprised everyone that was not a member of EC that came in to buy ice cream. We surprised them and paid for their ice cream, their families or individuals that day. And what a joy it was to see the young people employed behind the counter serving with a spirit of excellence. And for the owner who was working the cash register with a great big smile and such hospitality and a wonderful customer service. We want to support all of the businesses that we can in our community just to give them a boost and to say we love you and this is what Jesus would do. Well, again, 2020, we came in saying make it happen, make it matter, give back. Had no idea that a pandemic was on the rise, but we've been able to do that thanks to you and thanks to your love for ministry and your trust and confidence and the integrity of the leadership, amen, as you support it financially. Again, we love you from my heart to your heart. Thank you so much. Well, let's have a conversation tonight. And uh, as we're having that conversation, join us on our social media platforms, our Instagram, our Facebook, now YouTube. Uh, go there, share it with friends, share, 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 share. Get the word out, and what's blessing you, let it bless someone else. We've been a number of months in uh, this COVID-19 crisis in the United States and the global crisis across the world. And there are many churches and believers who have uh, had to get used to this new normal. Even non-believers have had to get used to a new normal. And I've talked with many across the country who have been diagnosed with the virus, husband, wife, and different pastors and people in their congregations. And they're riding this turbulent wave of this virus as its damage inflicts personally, emotionally, socially, and culturally, and even spiritually. Uh, they have expressed to me that they've never experienced anything in their entire life like this. Wear your mask, social distance, do what's been asked us to do. Let us sanitize properly and let us understand that this is not about us being in a hurry to come together to have worship experiences and to greet one another and be happy together. It's about our safety now. It's about the health and well-being of mankind. Not just about you, but it's about saving lives. So echoing literally what thousands have said across the world, COVID is no joke. Take it seriously. As a leader during this time and leading in ministry during this time, I want to assure you that our virtual uh, EC team staff, every Tuesday morning we meet 10 o'clock, 
We're working very hard to keep you connected, uh, to keep you involved in training, virtual fellowship with weekly prayer and worship experience. So go to our social media platforms, see how you can connect, see how you can join the EC group. I think we have close to almost 400 in the EC group now uh, where you can just stay connected and talk to each other and uh, just stay abreast of ministry. Uh, we want you spiritually fed so that as a ministry, we can stand where duty calls for the greater gospel impact. And since the beginning of this global epidemic, uh, EC has sought to be a leading voice in the world uh, so the church uh, can embrace this crisis and to show how the church can embrace this crisis with missional, this missional moment as it is a God opportunity. So by doing what we said we would do in 2020 before we knew the pandemic would hit, and that was make it happen, make it matter, and give back. So God set us on a course and I've learned, and I'm still being reminded, that when the Holy Spirit is birthing something in you, he doesn't always give you the details, but he depends on you to give a spontaneous response. And it goes back to the old hymn of the church, where he leads, he wants to know we will follow. So you don't get all the details. You just have to trust and obey and leave the outcomes to God. And that's exactly what we have been doing here in the ministry walking in obedience, listening to the direction of the Holy Spirit, and may I say to you that the outcomes have been amazing. The text messages, the praise reports of what God is doing, the releases that are happening have been exhilarating to my soul and to my spirit. So we've been blessed again to see $12,000 both in-house and outside of the ministry in a turbulent time, and there is no question that a crisis elicits decisions. When a crisis comes, as a result, pastors and church leaders have had to pause. They've had to pivot and thus plan and prepare for how they will minister and serve their church. It's almost like things literally changed overnight. In a few weeks, churches have had to decide how they were going to conduct ministry. And given what the federal government, the state governments were saying in connection to what the experts were recommending, most churches moved to some form of online ministry, and many have had to improvise their model of ministry. With all this going on, many are asking, here's the big question, what's next? What does all of this mean moving forward? There have been those that have been victimized by cancellations, postponed trips, weddings, graduations, remote classes that are coming, accommodations in small fashions of events that were supposed to be large events on a large scale have had to narrow down to just minimal 10, 15, 20 people. That's the nature of the situation in our country. That's the nature of situations in our world right now. It is not getting better. And yet we're all feeling the weight. We're feeling the weight of closures and cancellations and not being able to do what we used to do. We've had to improve and improvise on so many different fronts. This is a difficult period in the life of all of us. It is difficult. We've never had to walk through anything like this. So don't think that you're all by yourself. And some might say, I'm traveling through a dark night of my soul. There have been those that have lost loved ones, spouses, husbands, children in this COVID-19 pandemic. People have gotten furloughed, lost jobs, relationships that that you hope would end up being long-term have ended. A friend or family member let you down and you needed them the most at this time. Maybe you have been diagnosed with COVID or friends or family that have been diagnosed. Maybe your family has been hit with the death of this and how the list goes on and on and on. And the question before us tonight in our conversation is, how do I, how will I cope with what is before me? You don't know what I'm going through. My neighbors don't know what I'm going through. My church family doesn't know what I'm going through. How do I cope? How do I make it through this to the other side? How will we make sense of the difficult episodes that keep showing up in our life on a personal level, on a family level, on a financial level, with all of this other that is going on around me in the atmosphere and in the world? Well. Let me tell you, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. That's why I keep my ear close to the mouth of God so I can help walk us through this. As he walks me through, I want to walk through. And let me tell you, the Holy Spirit has a way, hear me on this, of framing 
our experiences and finding significance. When the dots don't connect, when nothing's making sense, when it looks like things are the opposite of what we're believing for, of what we're praying for, the Holy Spirit begins to make a frame and takes those experiences and give significance to them. Sometimes things won't make sense. No matter how much we read, no matter how much we pray or discuss with other believers or other persons, I'm learning that there are moments in life when things just happen. Life happens. And we leave ourselves. It, it leaves us baffled to the point of saying, what was that all about? I didn't see that coming. And yet, it leaves no inherent value whatsoever in our lives. And then there are those moments that seem to have redemptive possibilities. And we know that when that thing hits, that when that thing comes, that there's something I'm supposed to learn from that. There is a lesson I am supposed to get from that. Well, there are things you must know when we talk about seeing the bigger picture. And do not view specific challenges in your life or your setbacks that you face, challenges that you face, don't view the setbacks and those challenges in isolation, as we often are so inclined to do. No, there's a reason. No, there's a purpose for it. When you view a problem in an isolated event, detached from your past and your future, you will lose perspective, you'll run the risk of becoming discouraged, and then you'll be tempted to give up. And that's where the enemy wants you. Know that we've all been there. We, we've all been there. If you just stop uh, and think about it, we've all been there. But I've come tonight just to have a conversation with you in these next few minutes to tell you God has a bigger picture. Will you just smile with me and just say God has a bigger picture? I'm not telling you something I read, something that I heard. And yes, I read it. Yes, I heard it, but I've experienced it. And I'm seeing it now in the events of my life. I'm seeing it now in the events of this ministry, even with where we are, that God has a bigger picture. And in that bigger picture, he has a bigger picture for your life, for your children, for your grandchildren. He has a bigger picture for your business, for your profession, for your career. He has a bigger picture for America, for the world, and for the church. All of the above. They all belong to him. Everything that we have, everything that we are, it belongs to him. You know what? God has been framing, really, all of the circumstances in the larger context of your whole life, not just last year, not just in your 20s or your 30s, or your but all of your life, all of the experiences, he has framed them in the context of your whole life. And that's exactly what Isaiah 46 and 10 is telling us. I declare the end from the beginning and from long ago what is not yet done, saying, my plan will take place and I will do all my will. The Holy Spirit is going to help us in this critical season to locate how the present and the framework of your past and future will begin to make sense. Did you get that? The Holy Spirit is going to help you locate all of that, connect it all, because it's important right now. Because framing your present circumstances in the larger context of your whole life, then you step back and you see the bigger picture. We have been having some very powerful conversations. I hope you've been blessed by them. If you are, uh, send me a note there, make a comment and say, yes, I have been blessed. The bigger picture of where we are right now in this pandemic and this global crisis and this economic downturn with where we are, Isaiah 46 and 10 has been our backdrop text that we've been referring to as we're having these conversations. When we see isolated experience, it can lose credibility and purpose. When we see a situation and we isolate that experience as if it has no connection to anything that God is doing, we lose credibility and purpose. Because when we place that same experience in the larger framework of your whole life, something amazing begins to take place. What didn't make sense over here and what didn't make sense over there, when you step back from it and see it in the context of your whole life, oh, God, I see what you were doing. You are building character in me. You were growing me up. You were maturing me. You were getting me to go deeper in you. You were getting me to get my faith strengthened. You were trying to stabilize me and my emotions when you allowed that to happen. So much happens, that picture begins to take shape and you begin to see things more clearly. Praise be to God. 
Remember, sometimes we need to step back a little. What did I tell you the other day? That you're too close to the canvas. Step back in order to gain a more informed understanding. Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, Paul says that he, God, who began a good work in you, will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? God will finish what he started. Some of you don't even realize you're about to be displayed because God's getting ready to put the finishing touches on you. You've been through the grind. You've been through all kinds of sandpaper. God's gotten the grooves out of you. He's gotten the cracks out of you. He's getting ready to, to finish you and put you on display. Show his glory upon your life. God will finish what he started. No matter what it is you're currently going through, God isn't finished yet. Simply, Isaiah said in 46 and 10, the phrase shall stand when he says that my will shall stand. He said it shall be stable. It shall be settled. It shall be fixed. It shall be established. Just know this, that when God gives us a word as he does in Isaiah, it proves to us that God has a purpose and a plan in regard to human affairs. If God did not have a plan, he could not predict future events in this book. Events, since a contingent event cannot be foreknown or predicted. That is, it cannot be foretold that an event shall certainly occur in one way when the very supposition of its being contingent might either happen that way or some other way or not at all. God's not twiddling his thumbs, having a guessing game about what he's about to do next. He's not scratching his head, wondering what he's going to do with you. He has already seen it to completion. He already sees you as his workmanship, working together with him. He already sees you with the finished product. He already sees you being complete in him. And he already sees you walking in that victory. And yet, it is very important that you grasp what God is saying to you. Grasp how he's dealing with even your children or your grandchildren, or how he's dealing with America in a time like this, how he's dealing with the whole world in a time like this, the church and all the events that are taking place in this hour. Again, Isaiah is telling us that God always has a bigger picture, church, our human affairs personally, collectively, right where you are in your personal life trying to get order in it, trying to pull some things together. It might look like everything's been turned upside down for you, but no, God has a bigger picture. It could be that he wants to show his mighty hand. It could be he wants you to holler at him a little louder. It could be he wants you to reach up a little higher for him. He wants you to draw near to him so he can draw near to you. God has a way of the bigger picture for the church that's redeemed and even for the world affairs. And yet we are cautious and we're conscious of what's going on. We listen and we pray, we protest, and we do what we need to do in our communities as activists or whatever it is. But in the end, the last word and the final touch has to come from his will, flowing from the counsel of his will. Secondly, God's plan will not be frustrated. Don't you frustrate yourself because God's not frustrated, meaning it will not be unfulfilled. It will not be unsatisfied. And let me tell you something. Those prayers that you prayed that the enemy wants to shake his fist in your face and make you think those prayers will never be unanswered. Let me tell you, he heard you like he told Daniel the first day that you prayed. Who knows what's going on in the spirit realm, what demonic activity and warfare is going on against that son of yours, against that daughter of yours, against your finances, against your health. But know that if you prayed that prayer, that prayer did not fall to the ground. Heaven heard you, God heard you, and his will will be performed. He has the power and power enough to secure the execution of his design for you, for your life personally. Settle yourself and all of your affairs for the life of your children, for the life of your grandchildren and their futures, your careers and your professions, your dreams and visions. We've been blessed with a new granddaughter. She's just a few weeks old, but I tell you what, God's already laid her life out for her. God's already programmed the things that are gonna take place. We just pray the covering. We just pray his will be done in her life. We pray for her even now as she's been given to the Lord by her parents, by Justin and Tonisha. And yet your dreams and your visions, your business and your streams of income, 
your life frames and different seasons of your life. Speaking of frames and speaking of seasons, I want to inject this to all the seniors that are listening to me. I happen to be in that category of senior citizens. And you see your body going through changes. You see your emotions going through changes, mentally, emotionally. All these things that come with aging that look like just start happening one right after another. Don't you cave in. Don't you cave in now. You've been left here for a reason. And there is a bigger picture even for us that are becoming the seniors. And I'm asking for the same favor. Hear me on this. This blessed me that, that God gave to the family of Jacob in Isaiah 46 and 4. I'm asking for that. And you read it. If you're a senior, you read that because I'm asking for that too. He says, I will be the same until your old age and I will bear you up when you turn gray. I, I'm seeing it come in and uh, I'm saying, okay, look like every month there's more that's coming, which is a sign to me. And yet he said, I have made you and I will carry you, and I will bear you and save you. That's good news to me, but I love the way the message reads, and it says, listen to me, family of Jacob, everyone that's left of the family of Israel, I've been carrying you on my back from the day you were born, and I'll keep on carrying you when you're old. I'll be there bearing you when you're old and gray. I've done it, and I'll keep on doing it, carrying you on my back and saving you. My prayer is, God, bear us up. God, bear us up. Bear these seniors up. Bear me up. Bear us up and keep on doing you, God. Keep on doing you, God. Carry me on your back. There are days that I've had to look up, and I'm for sure you can agree, that I say, God, I need you to carry me today. There are some days I need more grace than I need others. And yet, in the bigger picture with God for you, for your children, your grandchildren, America, the world, Christ's church, let me tell you what God will do. God will exert that power in order that all his plans will be accomplished. Whatever he has to do to exert power in your life, in your children's life, in this world, in America, he's going to be assured that his plan is going to be accomplished. I've learned, and sometimes even now, I've had to remind myself, when I've done all I know to do in a situation, when I have exhausted all of my options, when my works have worked with my faith and I'm seeing I'm at a point that I need supernatural intervention, the only thing left to do is to say to God, Lord, it's in your hands. And somebody might need to say that right now. Lord, it's in your hands. I put the onus back on God. What do you mean, Bishop? I put the onus back on God. I put the responsibility. I put the burden. I put the obligation. I put the duty of that thing back on God. And you know why I put it back on him? Because my comfort comes right here in the word of God. And only the word. Learn to put the onus back on God. Learn to put the responsibility. Learn to put that burden. Learn to put that obligation and the duty back on God. And First Peter helped me out when he said in chapter 5, verse 7. I want to read it for the Amplified Bible Classic Edition. It said, casting the whole of your care. Not some of it, but all of it. All your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. You know, this pandemic has caused a lot of anxieties for all of us. A lot of pastors. You know, I've said to the Lord, I said, you know what? I'm putting on this back on you. This is your church. I'm just a steward. You know, you bought me with a price. I belong to you. God, you've got to make the way. You've got to provide for ministry. You've got to bless your people. I can't. I can pray over them, but bottom line, the release has got to come from you. And when needs have come up, I said, okay, here's another opportunity for you to prove yourself. And sometime it's been 1159, but I tell you, he has come through. I remember the charge he gave me. He said, you feed my people, I'll feed you. He said, you take care of the sheep, I'll take care of you. And I'm telling you, God has been faithful. I want to call and stand where duty calls me to stand. And I want to do what he's told me to do so he can do what he said he'll do even for me. He goes on to say, all your concerns once and for all on him, for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. He has affection for you and he watches over you. Let me tell you something. His eyes are always upon you. There's not a day, not a moment, not a movement that his eyes are not always upon you. Did he not say my eyes are in every place? 
beholding the evil and even the good. And yet, in other words, there is never a day that his eyes are not upon you. That's something to shout about right there. And yet, I want to remind you as we walk through this time that the safest place is in the Word of God. That's your safe place right here in the Word of God. For your emotional, for your mental, for your spiritual, for your physical well-being is going to be in the Word. Find yourself, hiding yourself emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, in the word of God. You will need to make it a practice. You're going to have to practice it. What you practice will become permanent. Practice, make it a habit in this turbulent time, during this recession, to pray his word back to him. Make it a practice with this depression that the world is now in, abiding in the word. Now, when you talk about abiding, it means to remain in. It means permanent. It means unshakable. It means steadfast. It means this is the principal thing. I'm telling you, all of the ground right now, sinking sand, always have been. Build your hope on this. Build your faith on this. Nothing else will stand. He said heaven and earth will pass away before anything will happen to his word. And yet John 15 and 4 in the international says, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can ye bear fruit unless you remain in me. You want success in your job? You want success in your business? Abide in this. Remain in him. You want to see financial increase come to your life in a time in a pandemic? Abide in this. You want your health and you want to walk in that health as the scripture said, I would that you be in health and prosper as your soul shall prosper. Abide in this. This is the healing bomb. This is your therapist. This is the one that can help soothe. He is the one that can calm seas. He's the one that can walk you through fire and you don't come out smelling like you've been burned. God is awesome and his word is awesome. He said in 15 and 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. And guess what? This blows me away and it shall be done unto you. Tie that around your neck. Make that a necklace around your neck that reminds you when you look in the mirror that says, if I abide in him and his word abide in me, I can ask what I will and it shall be done for me. <laughs> Glory to God. That'll make you dance right there. That'll make you shout right there. Your safest place in the whole round world is going to be abiding in the world. And let me tell you what's going to happen when you abide in the word. It will walk us through where we are right now. It's going to walk us through in what is to come. And it's going to navigate us through every storm and the turbulence that we're in right now. Let me say to you, as we wrap this up tonight, that is where you're going to find your peace. This is where you're going to find your comfort. It's where you're going to find your joy. It's going to find your rest, find your protection. It's going to be where you get your stabilizer in the midst of chaos all around you. Proverbs tells us in Proverbs 18 and 10, the name of the Lord is a fortified tower. Translations say the strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe. It's just knowing the fact that God has you. God has you. He says, give me your heart. Give me your life. Give me your hand. Let me walk with you. Let me walk you through everything I've already planned for you. And that's where unspeakable joy comes in. That's where the fact that God has a bigger picture for your life. And guess what? Everything that pertains to you. Hear me on this. God has a bigger picture for every one of your children, your grandchildren, in spite of where they are now. Let them go and release them. God has a bigger picture. You're not God. You're not the Savior. God has a bigger picture for America. Even after we watch the news, after we see everything that's going on, we say, God, is still your world, and you are coming in the second coming. God has a bigger picture for his church as he is preparing the church to prepare the world for Christ's return. Trust me, the bigger picture is being executed right now. Now, the bigger picture is being executed. When you can't see his hand, trust his plan. God's hand is in all of this. And yet, listen to the powerful, life-transforming passage that Paul gives us, and that, 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 that Isaiah gives us, rather, when Isaiah says, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, 
saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure. My plan will take place and I will do all my will. God is saying to us, I already know what the end is going to be. We may be surprised at the thing, but God says, I'm not surprised. So be asking him, God, what is my part in this? And as you ask God, what's your part in this? God says, because you trust in an infinite, wise, all-knowing God, I want to banish your anxieties in regard to the apparent irregularities and disorders of this universe. When we feel all things are under the direction of an infinite mind, it does something to our calm. It does something when we understand that his great design for us, for my life, for the life of my children, the beautiful world he has created, I resign to trust him. And I say, God, if your plans were not accomplished, there would be all occasion for us to be frustrated, for us to be agitated, to doubt, and to be in dismay. But I'm telling you, the world knows it's a higher power. The non-believer will tell you it's a higher power. But we know that higher power is the God Almighty. He is the creator. He is a power that's undisputable. He's irrefutable. He's undeniable. He's unquestionable. And he's undefeated. And if there is any power that can defeat the purposes of God, if there is any stubbornness of matter, or any inflexible perverseness in our natural minds, if there are any unexpected or unforeseen extraneous causes that could interrupt or thwart the plans of God, then we would be edged, we would be agitated, we would be stressed out unto the grave. But the moment we can fasten our conviction that God has formed a plan, glory to God, that God has a bigger picture that's in front of you, when you can fathom that, when you can embrace that, when you look at that, that all frames of your life, all seasons of your life, and the fact that all things which occur will be in some way made tributary, it will be an arm, it will be a stream, it will be an offshoot of that plan, because the transformative moment that you can let the Holy Spirit help you wrap your mind around this, calmness will come, peace will come, and the resignation to his holy will to say, Lord, it's in your hands for the bigger picture. God bless you. God keep you. Just remember that Psalms 31 and 15 says, my times are in your hands. And when you look at that in the text, certain words mean that I'll do my pleasure. I'll accomplish my wish. I'll fulfill the desire. Can you, your children, your grandchildren, everything that pertains to you. And my brothers and sisters, just know that God will never leave us stranded, that you matter and God's got you. Let's bow our heads in prayer. I'm going to make a prayer an invitation to anyone that may not know Jesus Christ. And if you are a, a, a person that's saying, you know what, Bishop Vaughn, I, I want that bigger picture that, that, that God has for me. All you have to do is open up your heart today and say, you know what, I can't do life by myself. I need God. I need the Lord Jesus Christ to be my Savior and to help me navigate through my life with his power and his strength. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and say, Jesus, I need you to do life with me. I need your life and need life eternal. And if you can believe that, that your sins are forgiven, accept him in your heart and make it yours to openly uh, uh, live for him without shame or without any doubt or fear that he'll leave you, know today that he's right there to walk in your heart. I want to welcome you to the family of God, accept the plan of salvation, and say, I believe that I'm saved. I believe that Satan has no more power over my life, and I'm going to give my life to the Lord for the rest of my life. If you do that, I'm telling you, you're going to feel the transformative power of Jesus Christ in your heart and in your mind right now. I want to pray for you, my, my brothers and sisters, as we pray for this bigger picture, as we pray that God will bring a calm, that God will bring a peace and to the life of his people in a chaotic time and a time that has so many uncertainties day by day and moment by moment. Let's pray. Lord God, we know you're here and we trust in your presence, your power, your goodness, your complete control over everything we're facing. Help us walk through the questions, assured of your answers, even though they're still unclear to us. We know that one day, Jesus, you're going to appear and you're on your way back, riding on a powerful horse, fully revealing your authority. And we know that even now, when we don't understand all of the things around us, we have you with us. And that's all that matters. Please give us increasing eyes of faith to trust you, what you're doing, even and especially when we don't understand it. Help us to trust your will 
and your plan. We love you and we trust you and we pray these things in your worthy name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening and thank you for sharing with us. Share with somebody else and let somebody else know they can be blessed also that God has a bigger picture for them. Plant that seed if you will to help us continue to do what we're doing and if this has been a blessing to you we can do much more as you continue to give and to support. Just know that you matter and God's got you.